everyone. Welcome back. I know it has been a short while. Uh, it's been a little bit because we are upgrading some of our equipment and so it's a little bit of us getting used to it. So I'm sorry that, you know, we had so many videos coming out at once and now we're kind of slowed down a little bit. <laughs> Uh, just to say, I have one more video that I plan to have out, and then I'm going to go on a little vacation. If you guys go ahead of me in the Bible study, I think that's great. I will catch up with you. Um, if not, for those who have uh, just catching up, I think this is a great opportunity for you to do that. So we will get together again <clears throat> real soon. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Uh, Heavenly Father, uh, we are grateful to you again. Here we are. And I pray, Lord God, and thank you again for the book of Colossians and his sister book, Ephesians. Lord, there is so much for us to know and learn. And I thank you that Paul has given us, um, wrote this book of Colossians to just put everything about Jesus right here, that there is nothing that Jesus isn't that He is so important to us and our salvation and um, our eternal life and just our life and with you, Lord, in heaven. Thank you, Lord, that um, he, you help us through this life. You give us and equip us in everything that we need and we, that you give us your word, Lord, and that we can actually get into and do this inductively to um, slow down and just... Um, to, uh, to chew onto these precious words that you have in, in Scripture, Lord. And thank you for all of this. Help us to learn today from this video. Uh, give us all that we need to know. And we are so thankful for our precious Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. So friends, again, we're, we're going to study the fullness of Jesus, and I hope that you had an opportunity to uh, be back to watch all the rest of the videos that we have in this series, uh, especially that we are really hitting it hard with Jesus is preeminent. He is the ultimate authority over everything. He is first and foremost in all aspects of everything. Um, the last video that we just had, and that was the Jesus, the supremacy of Jesus, and and uh, he is supreme and ultimate in power, authority, and glory um, and importance. And Jesus is supreme over everything. So that was in our last video. And now we're going to talk about the fullness of Jesus. So, wow, um, this is mind-blowing stuff. And I, I really hope that we are getting everything that we need to out of here. And remember, an inductive Bible study, friends, we, we are learning how to study the Bible ourselves. It is so important that we get into the scriptures ourselves. It doesn't matter if you're just starting or if you are a learned, you have been learning about scripture so much of your life. It doesn't matter. Just start. Um, every, God meets you where you are and he gives you these truths and it's just amazing and it just blows your mind. It's just so incredible. So be blessed. Get into the Word of God yourself. Don't just listen to um, you know sermons or you know Bible studies. Really, just open that Bible up and get in there yourselves. You will truly be blessed. I know it. Um, so let's go ahead and get started here. We're gonna uh, find out that in uh, in Christ all fullness dwells, and we're gonna go. I'm gonna read you Colossians 1:19 in the NASB, and then I'm gonna follow up. With the and um, with the Amplified Bible after this, so um, in the NASB it says, "For it was the Father's good pleasure for all the fullness to dwell in Him." And the Colossians in one nineteen, I love this because it kind of expounds on the Greek meanings of the word. So I really just want to read this as well and help you to listen, really focus and listen to what one nineteen is saying. It says, "For it pleased the Father for all the fullness, which is the of the deity, the sum total of His essence of Jesus, of His the Father's essence." all of his perfection, all of his power, and all of his attributes to dwell permanently in him, the Son. So all of what the Father is, the fullness of the Father, we see in, in his Son, Jesus. So we're going to 
focus on the first section of 119. And yes, we are parking again on, on this first. But I think in the next video, we're going to move on just a little bit. So I think this might be two or three verses that we're going to chew on and get through there. So I don't think we're going to be looking at one verse all the time. But, you know, let's just, you know, be where we need to be. And we don't want to miss any things, right? We don't want to miss anything, friends. This is amazing stuff. And it's incredible stuff. So I, I just want to focus on the Father is pleased with Jesus. Okay, and we're going to spend a little bit of time in this section here. And then we'll go into a little bit more about the fullness of Jesus. But let me put it, I want to read that same scripture. And I want to Put in please so you, it, it kind of the father is pleased in here so that you can again hear it for for what it all is it, what pleases the father is his son right so the father is pleased okay that in christ his beloved son that all fullness should dwell and god is pleased in the work his son has carried out on this cross so much so that he is pleased to reconcile all things unto himself by him, by Jesus. And I know we kind of went into the next verse there, but I wanted you to hear this. It pleased the God for all his fullness, for the work that Jesus did on the cross, and for the reconciliation of man, fallen man, to himself. You know, it pleased the Father. It pleased him. And through the person and the work of Jesus, the Christ, God is pleased to make peace with mankind. It's so important. God is so pleased with that. And if they will come through his son to be reconciled, no one had power over Christ except it was given to him from above. And why? Why? Why did God go to the cross? Why? Because God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son so that whoever believes on his name would not perish but have eternal life. You know, <laughs> so precious, the preciousness of this. God wanted to reconcile with us. He wanted us to reconcile with him, I mean, actually that he gave his one and only son, it pleased him that the work that Jesus did on the cross. And so here's more examples of Jesus was pleased, uh, I'm sorry, that God was pleased with Jesus. There are more instances here. And I like this because so, um, in these ver verses that I'm going to read here, there's gonna be a lot of verses here in this particular study, um, more than me c mouthing off on things, you know, more of a DD commentary. <laughs> let's let scripture interpret scripture, friends. That's what we should do all the time. And it, no matter what, don't let anyone, anyone, including me, if I say something wrong, if I make an error, because I certainly don't want to do anything on purpose, let scripture interpret scripture. When in doubt, look in the book, look in that book. <laughs> so there have been instances when we hear God say that he was pleased with his son. And uh, what I think is fascinating is that the sh um, there is a cloud, um, a shining cloud, that seems to be um, God's presence. And um, some of you would call it the Shekinah glory. Um, there is a cloud. And I'm going to read you Matthew 17, 5 from the Amplified Classified, uh, I mean, classical version. And it says, while he was still speaking, behold, a shining cloud composed of light overshadowed them. And a voice from the cloud said, this is my son, my beloved, with whom I am and always have been delighted. Listen to him. Wow. <laughs> it's a kind of glory. And uh, so let's just talk a little bit more about that cloud, that Shekinah glory. In Exodus 24, we have 15 through 18 in the expanded Bible, it has Moses is meeting with God. And so when we see the cloud representing God's presence, um, it is there uh, on the mountain when Moses goes up there to get the 
commandments. And it says, when Moses went up on the mountain, the cloud representing God's presence, the cloud, it covered all of it. And the glory of the Lord representing his manifest presence came down and settled on Mount Sinai. And the cloud covered it for six days. And on the seventh day, the Lord called to Moses from inside the cloud. And to the Israelites' sons, children of Israel, the glory of the Lord looked like a fire burning on top of the mountain. So in the when we just saw the verse with, um, with um, God in the cloud, like the sparkly cloud, when he was really pleased with Jesus. Here we also see that it's another manifestation of that cloud, and it looked like fire burning on top of a mountain. And then Jesus, he went into that mountain. I don't know if I would do that. A fiery cloud? I don't know. And of course, we have the pillar of fire and the pillar of cloud that led um, the Israelites through the um, Red Sea when Pharaoh was chasing them, and then the that same presence of God led them through the wilderness. And so this is a really incredible presence of God um, that we see that he actually shows up and he talks and says how pleased he is with his son. So that's why I really wanted to focus on here a little bit it was just to kind of see the presence of God and the how he is pleased and how he shows it. He doesn't just, he's not just a voice in heaven. This is a a presence. He's actually there. He's with him. And so, um, as I said, Moses went into that cloud and he went higher up on the mountain and he was on that mountain for 40 days and 40 nights. You know, the the cloud is just amazing. So we're going to see again when Jesus was baptized. So I kind of go backwards because I started with the transfiguration in Matthew 17. Now we're at Matthew 3. Sorry about that. But that's just how I have it in my notes. So we're going to jump around like that. But (laughs) it says, after Jesus was baptized, he came up immediately out of the water. And behold, the heavens were opened. And he, John... Um, saw the Spirit of God descending as a dove, lighting on him, Jesus. Behold, a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased and delighted. So again, we have a voice from heaven. We see the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, descending on Jesus as um, like a dove at, at his baptism with John the Baptist. Oh my goodness. So um, the Lord's special servant um, has, we have it here, um, Isaiah 42, 1a. And in Isaiah 42, there, I mean, in Isaiah, there are, I think, I believe four, could be wrong, but there are like four prophetic uh, verses, uh, not verse chapters that are, that talk about the suffering servant. So um, Jesus is talking in this Isaiah 42 is talking about Jesus is pointing to him, even though it doesn't have his name, but it is understood that it is the Messiah. And we have Isaiah 42, 1a, I want to do the first part of it um, from, I have it from the expanded Bible. It says, here is my servant, the one I support and strengthen and uphold. So um, he is the one I chose He is my chosen one, and I am pleased with my soul delights in him. So this is one of the four servant songs um, in Isaiah concerning Israel, and it's always applied to the mission and suffering of the Messiah. So God is pleased with the work that Jesus has done, his son. So we have prophetic, we have it in Isaiah, where it is talking about um, the the suffering servants. We have it in Exodus, as we know that um, God has um, his glory as, uh, as it appears in the Old Testament, appears in the New Testament as well. And we have a voice from heaven saying how pleased he is with his son and the work, all that he has done for him, uh, and that the fullness of him is in there. So we're going to move to all the fullness that dwells in him and Jesus. So all the fullness of God, all of his attributes and power and who he is, is in his son. The the full fullness of Jesus, he is 100% God, okay? He is the full fullness. There is nothing missing at all when we're talking about the fullness of Jesus. 
Um, and the church is in Christ's body is the completion. And it also that word also means fullness of him who himself completes all things everywhere. And that's in Ephesians 1.23. It's a good news translation. Again, the church is Christ's body. It is the completion of him. It is also, that also means fullness of him who completes all things everywhere. Um, in Colossians 2.9, it says, For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily. Jesus famously stated, Whoever has seen me has seen the Father in John 14.9. This indicates that he is fully um, it reveals that he is fully God. He reveals who God is because they were asking him, you know, show us the Father. And he's like, hey, I'm, I have been with you all this time. And when you have seen me, you have seen the Father. You've seen everything, the fullness of God you see in everything that I have done on this, on for everybody, on for mankind. I have done, I am, the, is the father. I, as you see the father, you see, as you see me, you see the father. I had it reverse there, wrong way. <laughs> so in Ephesians uh, 3.19, it says, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. So the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, you may be filled with all the fullness of God. So we are a work in progress. Okay, we are, when we accept Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit um, indwells us. And he is working on us to be more like Christ. And we are filled with that fullness of God. We are filled with the Holy Spirit. And so we're, it's like a, we're shared, sharing in that fullness of God, which is incredible to think that I know we are not little Christ running around, but we sure are learning how to be more like him. We are striving to be, um, to, to know him and be full with him. So this is just incredible that we can come to the Lord um, and know that we are kind of transforming. We are like little butterflies. And there is going to be a day when we will be just like him, we'll be transformed just like our Lord and Savior. Well, let's look at the word fullness. Uh, that is the Greek word pleroma. And it is means the fullness of God it is the state of fullness or the contents of it, its completion, its abundance, or the very full number. Um, that is what fullness means. The complete set of divine attributes that were incarnated in Christ is the fullness. And Christ is fully God, and he is also fully man. Remember I said that he is fully God, and he is fully man. He is not half and half. And he will forever inhabit a glorified human body. Yes, um, he is the unique son of God um, in this way. And Jesus is the full fullness, like I said just a little bit ago. Is that a real word? Is that a real word? I made that word. Full, he is the full fullness. But I don't know how all six to describe that. And now it's kind of funny because when <laughs> I think mothers do this a lot, but we do you ever double double up? I'm sure you have. This is the room room. And this is the chair chair. And this is <laughs> so this is the full fullness. It's it's trying to say that this is the full of that, you know. This is the room room you know this is the room room right we have a way of saying that so that's how i was putting this is that jesus is the full fullness because he is totally complete and he is just filled to the brim with the character and the divinity of god jesus was and is 100 percent god he is the earthly expression of god jesus is the word made flesh and dwelt with humanity. That's John 1.14. Like I said, he became, he was God, became man. He, he had flesh. Uh, he dwelt with us and he lived with um, a mortal human body. He wasn't some kind of ghost. He wasn't some kind of spirit. He had a human body. He identified with our human weaknesses and our limitations. And he's just like us, except without sin. That's Second Corinthians 5. 21. <clears throat> um, John 1.14 calls Jesus the Word of God incarnate. 
And when the Word of God incarnate completes the written Word, we're going to see an example of that. He completes all Scripture. All of Scripture, the whole entire Bible is Jesus. Okay, everything points to Him. He is the Word of God. He is the Word of God incarnate, and He completes the written Word. All the scriptures bear witness to Christ and Moses, he wrote about Christ. In John 5, 39, 46, in the, in the English Standard Version, it says, you search the scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life. And it is that they that, that bears witness about me. If you believe Moses, you would believe me, for he wrote of me. And this is what Jesus says. He said, Moses wrote of me. The prophets wrote about me. All, everything, the law is me. And remember, Jesus says that he fulfills the law. So I, I'm, I'm sorry, I hope I'm not confusing everybody out there, but Jesus is the fullness. He is everything. And he is, wor he is the word. He is the scriptures. So he, he's telling us that Moses, if you, if you um, think that you, in them you have eternal life, then I'm it. Well, Jesus, I'm it. If you believe Moses, you would believe me, for he wrote about me. Incredible. And every single scripture, like I said, it points to Jesus. It points to him. And even in the cases where there isn't like, you know, a direct prophecy, there is just a beautiful depth of meaning in all the scriptures that is fulfilled when Christ came. And it completes his work on the cross and his resurrection from the death from the from death and Christ fulfilled the law and the prophets and he says this in the road to Emmaus and this is where we get our name here it's on the road to Emmaus uh, Jesus met up with them and he expounded on the scriptures and he this is what he says and from the beginning with Moses and the prophets he interpreted to them Cleopas and his and the and his friend that was with him that in all the scriptures the things concerning himself so the prophetic books, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Jonah, Moses, all of these books, everything, everything is talking about Jesus there. Uh, Jesus, is, he fulfilled everything that's in scripture. He fulfilled all the types and the shadows and the patterns and the figures that were prophetic foretellings, like a pre-echo. A pre-echo. It's, it's like God was dropping hints for us, like bread, little breadcrumbs for us that points to Jesus, like little breadcrumbs for us to find him, find that Jesus is fulfilling all of these scriptures. It's all about Jesus, all of them. Uh, like an example, we have a type, uh, Adam. Adam is a great example. And for as in Adam, I'll die. And even so in Christ, shall all be made alive. And that's in 1 Corinthians 15, 22. Adam was a type. He, um, as death entered through them, we have life through Adam. We have life through, or death through Adam, and we have life through Christ. Another shadow and a pattern that Jesus um, fulfilled was the law. Like I said, Jesus fulfilled the law without contradicting it. And you'll see that in Matthew 5, 17. So look, Nothing created, nothing created can compare to the fullness of Christ. Not a man, not an angel, not Satan, even though he'd like that. Nope, nothing, nothing can compare to the fullness of Christ. He fulfilled all of scriptures. But how does, you know, what does this mean for us? How does the script, how does the fullness of Christ affect us? Well, it says in John 1 16 that we receive grace upon grace and grace is an action or power and influence. It's undeserved favor, kindness, and mercy. And it's also not dependent on our acts. Grace provides us with more than enough to do what we need to do good deeds. So grace is a huge word. Um, and he, uh, with the fullness of Christ, we are given grace. And it also enables us to live more like Christ. Um, and from Ephesians 3.19, we get that. And it's because we are filled with the Holy Spirit at the time that we accept Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We are filled with the Holy Spirit. Incredible stuff. But being filled with the, um, being fully filled with God, with his character and his qualities and his love, that is one of the most important goals of every Christian out there. 
And I am sure that God who began good work within you will keep right on helping you grow in his grace until his task within you is finally finished on that day when Jesus Christ returns. It's Philippians 1, 6 from the Living Bible. How beautiful is that? God is producing a good work in you, and we will continue to grow in His grace until His task within us is finally finished when He comes back. The fullness of God, I there's so much to know and learn, and so I think we probably just did a short little, you know, little tidbit on there, maybe a, maybe a breadcrumb of information for us on the fullness of Christ. There's so much. And we're going to talk about the fullness of Christ even more um, here shortly as we move into Colossians 2. We do have a few more verses that we have remaining. I think there's uh, seven more verses, rem seven or eight more verses remaining in Colossians 1 that we need to go through. But again, remember the reason why Paul is writing this letter to Epaphras for the to the to the Colossae, to the city of Colossae, because there were heresies that are trying to find their way into this into the church there. And Paul, he was giving everything here to counteract these false teachings. And he was giving it all, turbocharging it, laying all the cards on the table. He has nothing to lose. Because if you can't get these them here with these scriptures what is jesus not he is everything he is the word of god when you pick up that book when you pick up that book you're basically picking up jesus and that is you know it's just mind blowing that all these truths that we can apply to our life how important it is for the fullness of christ we are being filled with Christ every day when we come to Him, when we get into His Word, He meets us there. And we pray, oh, and we meditate on the Word, and we memorize the Word. There's just so much. Friends, this is incredible stuff. The fullness of Christ. Wow. Jesus is preeminent. He is authority over everything. He is first and foremost. He is the ultimate. He is superior in everything, and He completes everything. He is the fullness. He is the Father. Everything the Father is, He is. And the Father is so pleased, pleased that Jesus is God. He's so pleased that Jesus work on the cross, and He is so pleased that Jesus reconciling mankind to Him. Wow, the work of Jesus, he is so pleased. And he is pleased with you, friends. He loves you so much that he gave his one and only son for us. He so loved us. How incredible, friends. Well, I I really don't want to wrap up this video. I really don't. I love you all out there. And I don't want it to end. But we are coming to an end to our video today. I hope that you will like and subscribe to our videos. It really helps to get us out there and to share the good news with others, help them to learn about Jesus. And we just want to save so many people out there. So thank you. Um, again, share with your friends and family, uh, coworkers. Uh, please do share and like and subscribe. And we're, well, we, we thank you. We thank you so much. Uh, so let's go, Lord, in prayer. And uh, Lord, we are again coming before you because, Lord, help us to understand the fullness of Jesus. Help us to understand the preeminence of Jesus. And help us, Lord, to understand the supremacy of Jesus. There is so much, Lord, to learn and know. And Lord, we are grateful to you that no matter if we are just starting out or if we have been a seasoned uh, learner of the word, that we will always be learning the word until we are there before you and you will meet us at whatever level we're at. 
And you just fill us with the excitement of your word. Learning a truth, Lord, and understanding, it's just so remarkable. And we are just (laughs) dumbfounded (laughs) in all that we learned. It's so incredible, all this. It's so incredible. I hope I didn't go through this so fast, Lord, that I I hope I didn't confuse anybody out there. I know I, I have to go through it, but Lord, there's so much to know. <laughs> but we are thankful, Lord. <clears throat> Losing my voice there. So thankful, Lord. And I thank you so much. Please be with us. Help us in our studies. Help us, Lord, to get into the Word and the scriptures ourselves and really start digging around in there and and applying these scriptures to our lives. We are grateful to you for all. Uh, We hope that you will be with us uh, when we meet again. And thank thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. I am am ecstatic. I love you all. And to our next video, bless you all. Bye-bye.